Glory be to God, King the fire. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God, King the fire. church. Thank you for each and every one of us. Thank you for all that concerns us. Thank you, Father, for our soul, spirit, and body. Thank you for our children. Thank you for our marriage. Thank you for our families. Thank you, Father, for our career. Thank you, Father, for the fact that we are still up and about. We appreciate you. Thank you for Budapest. Thank you for Hungary. Thank you for Central Eastern Europe. Thank you for Europe. Thank you for Israel. Thank you for the Middle East. Thank you for our various nations of origin. Be glorified. And most especially, Father, thank you for your church. RCCG Hungary Mission and all the churches across Hungary and all the churches across Central Eastern Europe. Be glorified. As your children, we have gathered once again. Speak to our hearts. Open our eyes to see what you want us to see and ear to hear what you want us to hear. And grace to apply our heart unto wisdom, grant unto us, O Lord. Thank you for answered prayer during the prayer section. Thank you for accepting our worship during the worship section. Be glorified, be lifted high. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Let's be seated. The topic is Divine Shift Part 2. As we continue a series on Divine Shift this month, and as our sisters led us to pray, each and every one of us will experience our supernatural shift from negative to positive in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever your promised land is, the Lord will take you there. Amen. If you are still in Egypt of your life, the Lord will deliver you. Amen. 
If you are in the wilderness of your life, the Lord will grant you direction. You know, in the wilderness, we're told that the pillar of light and the presence of the Almighty God, you know, at night and daytime, the presence of the Lord was with them. So it will be your portion, my portion, our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans chapter 9. If you read Romans chapter 9 from verse 9 to 17. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah, number one, shall have a son. And not only these, but when Rebekah, number two reference, also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The eldest shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob, another reference here, have I loved, but Esau, another reference, have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, that's another reference, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then, it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture says unto Pharaoh, another reference, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might not my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Now the various characters in this passage are Sarah, Rebekah, Jacob, Esau. Moses was mentioned, but the focus was on whom I will have mercy and whom I will have compassion. That's the character. So if you or myself are a recipient of God's mercy and God's compassion, you fit in into this passage. Then he gave us the person of Pharaoh, whom the Lord shifted from glory to shame. What I'm trying to or what the Lord is trying to point our attention to here is the fact that the sovereign God who does not owe anybody any explanation can shift anybody from zero to glory from positive back to negative you can be demoted you can be promoted I mean naturally verse 13 it is written as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Naturally, you will say, ah, but that's not fair. But honestly, when it comes to the sovereignty of the Almighty God, we cannot do anything. Honestly, you cannot argue with Him, you cannot question Him. Today's focus will be, I mean, in this series, will be on. Who is behind, note very well, who is behind the various wilderness in our life. And the types of wilderness that we have. And lastly, how we can maintain or what are the expected things that we should know or do to maintain the wilderness stages of our lives. At least by the time we share the grace, by the time you'll be going home, or probably you are looking back at this message or listening to it again, you should be able to look out for what are the various wilderness in life. Who is behind it? And now those of us who are in one form of wilderness or another, what are you expected to do? If you did not listen to the last message, at this part one, it's online, it's on our YouTube. Please, try and go home and understand what the Lord is saying at this time. Now, there is a, pass, a prayer that the Lord Jesus Christ prayed in Matthew 6, verse 13. Matthew 6, verse 13 is part of the Lord's prayer. It says, the Lord said, 
and lead us not what into temptation but what deliver us from evil you see there is need for us to be divinely led all right when we are divinely led we will avoid destruction or we'll avoid egypt or we'll avoid bondage but whoever leads us or whatever leads us into problem will create unnecessary wilderness for our lives and for the lord jesus christ to have said and deliver us from evil means there is need for deliverance in certain aspects of our lives i repeat lead us not into temptation this was what jesus said so in that case you have to be careful who is leading you morally who is leading you spiritually who is leading you relationship wise who are you following whatever it is you want to qualify it with who is leading you what is leading you because if what or who or even where you know places have the tendency to lead some people you know we kept saying that some of us we like to dress like the europeans because we think we're in europe <laughs> you are not of this kingdom some of us want to behave like oh yes although they say that uh, when in rome do like the romans but for a kingdom minded person a kingdom citizen wherever you go you will still maintain your identity most people most christians have been led into problem because they forgot the kingdom principle of lifestyle and allow the environment that they are to lead them i mean why would you be dressing uncovered ladies why would you want to just because you feel that okay we are in this part of the world it is normal it can be normal things like that will lead, always lead into wilderness why would you want to you know allow hero to dictate how you will relate with your partners in the uk i mean maybe in another part of the world but majorly in the uk there used to be this opera eastander and medal and most of the languages that are being spoken on the streets do come from all this soap opera up to the fact that you will begin to see people speaking like the actors it's a manipulative environment well, well, look some people some i know well in my own little uh tenor here in hero few couples have messed up their marriages because they copied what they see in soap opera they they feel that is a norm and that leads to problem you don't talk to your partners with the way hollywood or i don't know which one we call london would talk to themselves you look lead us not into temptation the lord jesus christ prayed and those who are now led into temptation and fall into evil they need to be delivered that is it some some people are trapped in the consequences of their temptation okay what is the content of your social media platform i mean i'm asking an honest question what is the content of your secret life what is the content of your passion no scan yourself the lord said lead us not into temptation and one thing we need to understand is that this is where the main problem lies some of us when we came from wherever we came from when we left egypt we dressed like the egyptians we talk like the Egyptians. You know, we have Egyptian appetites. Now we've passed the Red Sea and we are still dressing like the Egyptian. We are still behaving like the Egyptian. We are still in Egypt. Because then you will just be wondering, why, what are you doing? Oh, you've left Egypt, you are in the wilderness. That's a terrible wilderness. Because you have not fully cut off from Egypt. 
Lead us not into temptation. Whoever falls into temptation will certainly be trapped. And that then needs deliverance. I mean, go and do the homework yourself. Go and search yourself. Some of us, we left Egypt and we still have the profile of Egyptian in our social media, in our lifestyle, in our choices of dressing and behavior. And that individual from Canaan land, from promised land, that is looking for you, will dig you out and say, ah, who is this person? This is like an Egyptian, but he said, she said, she's in promised land, but what is this? Brethren, please, you know, we are talking about divine shift. They don't want to shift some of us, but some of us are still glued to the past. You know, in the case of Moses, when he killed the Egyptians because of the rift that, that was between him and, uh, you know, you know the Bible story, he fled to the wilderness. And the children of, uh, the children of, I think, Jethro, they, they saw him, how he helped them in the wilderness with watering the cattle, and they reported to their father that what an Egyptian helped us. Do you know why? Because Moses was dressed like an Egyptian. Start with your identity. If Moses ran away from Egypt, but he dressed like an Egyptian and he was described as an Egyptian. Sisters, go back to your social media platform and correct the errors there. Before the end of this year, you'll be divinely shifted. If you look, it doesn't matter how glamorous, it doesn't matter how sweet you think you look, you're an Egyptian. An Israeli will not come for you. Somebody from Jordan will not come for you. If you still have, like, so, like Lord's wife, if your heart is still in Sodom, you know, the problem is that an Egyptian like you will locate you. And when the person comes, you say, ah, you are an Egyptian. You say, ah, you won't come. You say, I'm not an Egyptian. You say, ah, but what is this? And you are praying and fasting and screaming. You say, no, 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 stop that nonsense. Go and be Egyptian yourself. It's up to you. But at least the word of God has come. He, he, look, some of us, we just put ourselves in an unnecessary wilderness because of passion, because of glamour, because of tastes. The Lord Jesus Christ said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Two points. Number one, scriptural cases of wilderness experiences. Let's be very practical with ourselves. And let us please save ourselves of all these sentiments of all, you know, some of us, we have good excuses to still remain an Egyptian and to feel in the wilderness when we are supposed to be moving forward. This same thing applies to business, it applies to project, it applies to career, it applies to education, it applies to everything, first and foremost. See how the Lord started. The Lord, you know, I told you that Genesis, the 50 chapter book of Genesis, talks about Abraham, about the godly family after the flood. You know, Genesis chapter 3, there was a problem that caused an all-round problem. Then in Genesis chapter 6, the devil now doubled the problem by polluting. You cannot be talking about the gospel if you don't understand the implication of Jesus on the cross correcting the error in Genesis chapter 6, 1, 2, 3, and Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 18 or thereabout. If you get that right, you as an individual, then you now ask yourself, if I am still in Egypt, I dress like the Egyptians, and I remain in Egypt, I will die in Egypt. But the Red Sea has been parted you pass through the cross. I mean, sorry, through the Red Sea. Yes, through the cross into the wilderness. Now, if you are still holding on to the Egyptian's lifestyle, you are saying that, yes, I know about Jesus Christ. 
I know about the cross, I know about the Bible, I know about Jesus House Budapest, I know about Sunday School, I know about this, I'm even part of them, but I am still holding on to my lifestyle. That will lead to nowhere. But if you can make up your mind, voluntarily, emotional ties, spiritual ties, carnal ties, natural ties, be deliberate about removing yourself from the spiritual obligatory cord of, I don't know, what, what is that thing called there? Obligatory what? Cut it off. Because when the Lord is shifting you, you are going to be pulling yourself back. You, you, that, that is one deliberate thing you have to do. Now, let's look at real case studies. Case study of a guy. You know, stories in the Bible are not there for sure. I was going through this lady's case study. In Genesis chapter 16, verse 4 to 14, number one, the case study of a guy. You see, a guy was a slave to Sarah, and the Lord de delayed the shifting of Sarah from being a widow to a mother. He promised Abraham. Sarah knew about it. But you know, sometimes, because of the people in our life, they have a way of complicating our lives or complimenting our life. May you have somebody that will complement your life. Amen. May you not date somebody that will, that will complicate your life. Amen. In, in essence, Sarah at this stage complicated Abraham's life. He said, okay, oh God said he will give you a child. But I, I, I don't really buy that. Or maybe I do, but before then, people are making mates of me, they are raising nose at me. I'm married and I don't have any child. Oh, I'm not married yet. Singles. And I don't know what is happening. Instead of you to wait. Oh, you want to, you know, the way we have we have good adjective to qualify, giving ourselves sympathy talk. Others are making it a moment. You are not in it. You just wait in the wilderness and, and trust God. Instead of he, uh, 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 Sarah to wait, he now, she now encouraged a slave, a guy, to go into our husband. How sometimes we do some silly things when we are desperate. Eventually, in Genesis 16, verse 4, a guy despised a mistress who dealt hardly with her and fled to the wilderness. You know, it's not a good thing to be married and not to have a child. When a man now comes in with a second wife, somebody younger than you are, <laughs> and she now has a child, and instead of this young wife to be showing you some respect, she's now raising nose at you. I mean, you understand? You don't need to Hollywood that before you can feel it. And consider the fact that Sarah was the mistress for Agar. If a guy was Ada Abraham's uh, slave. I know Sarah will find it difficult to tell him to ask her to leave. But you know, in the drama of life, it was Sarah's uh, 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 slave. And now she, she was not raising nose at her, uh, at her master. You know, slave is different from servant. Your slave is your property. I, I mean, we're meant, to, we're meant to understand that during the Roman Empire, the recent Roman Empire, you can throw your, your slave from up of, of a rooftop and kill and die and you'll be arrested. Honestly, it's as serious as that. So for a slave to now be despising you, that really got into Oga Madame and said, please send this. You understand? So, so in a way, our guy now found herself in the wilderness. You know, the story is about our guy. Uh, in verse 7, Genesis 16, verse 7, and the angel of the Lord found her by the fountain of the water in the wilderness. You see, fountain of water where? In the wilderness. There is always a wilderness to these things. By the fountain in the way to Shua, verse 8, and he said, Agai, Sarah's maid. So, 
is telling her that you, you belong to who? Sarah. Agai. Sarah's mate, when comes down, and whither would thou go? Alright? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarah. Verse 9. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her. You know, we're talking about operating in the wilderness now. Some of you will tell you, some of us are in the wilderness of our lives here in Budapest. It's not an accident God brought you here. It's not an accident God brought you to this church. And you are not beginning to despise the leadership of the church. Or the person you are under, that at least helping you in Budapest. In Budapest, you don't know. You are still thinking that you can reach sure that you know better. You don't know anything. It's not an insult. There are times when you need to submit. Honestly. So, in the wilderness of life, when you are under somebody, submit. It was because she understood. Because in the wilderness, where would she go? She could have been raped. Uh, wild animals could have come up. I know some people, while they were here, instead of them to at least submit to my little self, they will be raising nose at me. They are no more in Hungary. And they actually regretted doing that. I mean, it's not as if we gather ourselves together. No, it is the Almighty God that gathers us together. So when, when you are there, now go back home and sit down. Here in Budapest, here in Hungary, how, who are you despising? Some people have despised the, their destiny helpers. Some people have disappointed, in short, they even made their destiny helper regretted helping them. It's not, it's not, we are not throwing stone at anybody. We are only expanding the scripture. Go back, repent, and just like a guy, say, okay, I would, you know, submit. I just imagine her coming back, understanding the father, ah, angel appeared to her. So she's important. And she must have, you know, gone back to Sarah, knelt down and said, Madam, I'm sorry. Some of us, in why we are still in the wilderness, we need to go back and apologize to the people that God has brought us under. Because, having said the, the fact that Agai was a bit naughty, the Almighty God is greater than our mistakes. That's why I don't care what you did before. I don't care what happened, but the moment we are together, okay, wait, wait, is that, is that, it? Is that it? Okay, wait. How do we correct this error? Honestly, the church is not a place to throw stone. Don't say hey, you are a sinner. Don't keep pointing that to people. People, some people tell the other oh, wait. I'm in hell already. You kept telling me I will go to hell. I will go to hell. I'm already in hell. How can I come out from hell? When you are coming to church, you are not you are not holy. We are nobody is perfect. However, our gathering together, Bible study, Sunday school, teaching, are to correct us. So that was exactly what happened to Ega because. You know, if God wanted to deal with Agar the way he despised Sarah, God's anointed, ah, he wouldn't have even bothered to, to even listen to her, but maybe because she was carrying Abraham's seed. The Lord will remember you. Amen. The Lord will, will even use your error to be a blessing unto you in the name of Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the same Agar about four or five chapters later when in chapter 21 Genesis 21 look at another scenario here you know we are talking about the wilderness experience verse 12 and God said unto Abraham let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of the bound woman in all that Sarah had said unto thee hearken to her voice for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Another scenario came. This time around, it wasn't Agai, because Agai has learned her lesson. If you read a little bit further, I mean, uh, uh, before then, it was, the, it was Ishmael that despised Sarah now. And Sarah said, okay, your mama did the same. You too did the same. I think it's in your, in your it, it, she, she can't say the father, because <laughs> that is Abraham. I'm sure. She, she, not, she not said, okay, okay, I know you, I can't take it anymore. 
Okay, let's go to verse 10. Let's, let, I think let's go to verse 10. I just want you to understand how these things operate. Uh, wherefore she said unto Abraham, cast out verse 9. Uh, um, uh -huh. And Sarah saw the son of Agai the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham. Do you what? Do you know some of us mock us in this church? And you see how the tendency to be a member of this church. A guy despise. A mama despise. Into the mock. You know, I told you something, I mean, during sometime last year. I said, please, stop raising your nose at anybody. He said, it should be a deliberate thing. You know, husband, you know, sometimes we men, we men will always be men. And uh, you talk to a lady and uh, she goes, ah! And this man was looking at the mirror and she saw the wife did that. Raising nose at her. I mean, I just come up with a real life story. You don't need to believe it. Just imagine it. And that simple, well, that raising nose led to the divorce, led to divorce of that marriage. You say, ah, is it that serious? Oh, please, brethren, in life, at least the Bible says, honor oh, all men. Oh, no. What, what, why would you even be doing that as Christians? Don't, don't raise nose, don't, even though if, if you know you are right, just let it be. <laughs> I'm sure some of our wives are not doing that. Because it's not funny. This boy mocked Sarah. Verse 10. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bound woman and her son, for the son of the bound woman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight. Why? Because of his son. However, verse 12, And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight. He said, The Lord is going somewhere. Because of the lad, and because of the bound woman, in all that Sarah had said unto thee, Akin to her voice, for in Isaac thy seed shall be called. The destination is still with us, mark it in the first place. And also of the son of the born woman will I make a what? A nation, because he is thy seed. Verse 14. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and bottle and gave it unto a guy, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. Ah. That must have been the, one of the difficult things that Abraham must have done. Uh, and, and she departed and wandered where? In the wilderness of Budapest. You know, some people are like that. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow, a bow shot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept. You know, if you, there are few ladies that jump into a relationship. Here in Europe, I remember in France in particular, when I say I'm a father of many children, it's not cheap. Because it's happened in my church in those days. Pastor Jidi and Pastor Dupre that came, and it was here. I mean, some of you. They, they witness it, that's why they're calling me a pastor of many children. Because there are cases like this. If a guy were to be in my church, and this scenario happened, in short, some a guys even left their children, their children. Because this is frustration. Here in Europe, if you have been sent to study now, and you now find yourself in this situation, you have sexual relationship with someone, and bam, you are pregnant. Ah, and the child comes, and the guy ran. You have no job, no money, no social benefit, you will not become a mother. There are times when you will be crying. There are times when things will not be easy. And so there are a few news here in Budapest where some even who are now attached to child, they are even they want to dump their children to someone and run. I mean, a lot of stories. A lot of stories. And God had the voice of the Lord, not the guy. You know, the blood is a covenant seed. And the angel of God called to Agai out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee, Agai? 
Fear not. Why? For God hath heard the voice of the land. Where is he? Oh, sorry, where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold it in thy hand, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she, you see, when you are in the wilderness of life, even when there are goody goodies around you, you won't be able to see. Even when there are opportunities around you, you won't be able to see. When you are a bewildered soul, you know, some singles, those people that you are looking for far away are nearer you. But because you are bewildered, you have your own thing. You have your own disturbance. Maybe you still have Egypt. There is somebody in Egypt you think can hurt up. Oh, come on. May the Lord open your eyes. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Joseph. And she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. And God was with the lad. And he grew and dwelt where? In the wilderness and became an archer. Is it this verse? And he dwelt, you see, in the wilderness of Budapest. And his mother, you are looking at me, I know what I'm saying. And his mother took in a wife out of the land of Egypt. Some people are meant to prosper in the wilderness. Are you following me? Some people's destiny are meant to be in the wilderness. What I'm trying to say in essence is that Agar's second wilderness experience was a result of something beyond her control. And that was used to send her destiny and that of Ishmael into the wilderness. <laughs> you can see the whole drama. If the Lord had remained with Sarah, no <laughs> forbid Sarah can even poison him. And you know, it was his property. Are you following me, brethren? I don't know what is going on in your mind now. Ask yourself, where are you? All right, where are you? Case study two. I have to be fast now because emphasis, I intended to spend more on Agai, which I've done. But just go with that. You see, the person of Esau, and I want us to be very careful here because I think there were times when I look back in my life, there were few aspects of my life that actually I can say that, oh, uh, I suppose I've listened to this guy very well. In Hebrew chapter 12, verse 15 to 17, Hebrew 12, 15 to 17, Paul was telling the, I mean, the Holy Spirit through Paul or through the writer of Hebrew was telling the Hebrew Christian, telling us now, because the Hebrew in the Bible, in the New Testament, was written to the Jew Christians, so they understood it. He said, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled, lest Look at this, look at this example, look at this case, case study. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. Alright? Now what was this guy's crime? Who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright? That was his mistake. I said that was not enough. For ye know how that afterward, this is where I'm going, when he will have inherited the blessing, that is when he will have stepped into his promised land, he was rejected. For he was found no place of repentance. Though he sought it carefully with tears. Ah, you know there are some things a person can lose and you cannot regain them. Are you following me, brethren? There are some certain things in our life that cannot be regained. It doesn't matter who pray for you. So that is why you have to be very, very, very careful. For example, our honor. Imagine somebody accidentally just naked you 
on the high street. I mean, what is this place? They're on the street, just for five seconds. And you now cover, you say, ah, sorry. Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. Oh Jesus. You will forgive the person, isn't it? But what about your honor? Another thing is our self-esteem. Okay? Then our precious personal thing. For example, ladies, you know, one, I don't know what they call is it one stand club or what all this, please be very careful. When anybody has sexual intercourse with you, you can't get it back. You can't. And it has a way to stick with you the rest of your life. Don't, don't, I, 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 I keep telling us, don't make yourself cheap. Don't, you are precious. Try and understand the honor God vested in you. The glory God vested in you. You know what? Because of what you follow one stupid, excuse my language, one idiot somewhere. And you still come here. And, uh, don't throw away your honor. If you, have, if you do that for somebody of honor, who is understandable, then the honor will just be together. It's, 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 you know what I'm trying, trying to say? Don't belittle yourself. You are wonderfully made. Like Esau, he prayed for it, no way. Then, our destiny position. You know, Queen, uh, the other Queen that Esther replaced. Uh, sorry? Vash. You can't. Look, I, I look at Saul and David. The Lord will kick you out. Will replace you. If you choose not to be serious with whoever or whatever you are doing. As far as the Almighty God is concerned, He wants to shift us into a glorious place, but we should cooperate with Him. Number three, the case study of Jacob. You know, like the case of Hagar guy above, Jacob fled with the help of his mother as a result of his mistake to have a taste of wilderness experience in his uncle's house, Laban. <laughs> like in Aaron, you know, in Genesis chapter, if you look at Genesis 27, although the whole wilderness experience of Jacob here is 28 and 29, but look at this. And Esau, you remember, it was Jacob that did 419. He cheated his brother, right? That's the background story. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And honestly, it's not Jacob's fault. We just saw how Esau forgot his identity because of food, because of kebab. Imagine Jacob say, okay, okay, you are hungry. I want you to give me, tell me I'm your brother. Say, ah, tell me, tell you, I should tell you you are my brother, that you are my big brother. And he so felt, what will you give me? <laughs> Jacob said, kebab. Kebab? Wow. And you know, Jacob knew how to, I mean, he knew how to cook very well. And he said, okay, you are my big brother. And he said, take kebab. Ah, don't sell your destiny. Now, second scenario, the same Jacob that stole his br big brother's position because of kebab, he now tricked him again, now with the help of his mother. Now, and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of my mo the days of mourning of my father are at hand. Then I will slay my brother Jacob. And these words of Esau, our elder son, were told to Rebekah. I don't know the other people that said that, but you know, when God wants to like <laughs> do his thing, Esau was one, Rebekah was not there, maybe the servant had it. Then he went, he went to tell uh, Rebekah, and she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said unto him, Behold, thy brother Esau, as touching thee, doeth comfort himself, purposely toward 
killed the verse 43. So, because of her connection, she got you visa, Hungarian visa. Pow, prayer, go, go to Budapest. Go and meet Pastor Mike. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice and arise, flee thou to Laban, my brother, to Haran. Guys, these are case studies, and it is still happening. Some people committed crime. I think I remember counseling somebody in France in the church. He said, Apostle, may I keep a person? He killed a person. Mark it away on my end. It's a long story. Police can He actually committed murder and came to France. People do that. Even in the Bible, there is a city of refuge when you commit crime. If you can escape to the city of refuge, you are covered. And tarry with him a few days until thy brother's fury turn away. Underline a please go back. Underline a what? A few days. Just go and stay there, stay in Budapest for three weeks. You know, some parents are so rich, they can get to visa now and they just call the ambassador or whatever country. Alright? And tarry with him a few days until thy brother's fury. Now until thy brother's anger turn away from thee, and he forgets that which thou hast done to him, then I will send and fetch thee from there. Rebecca is the one talking, you know, why should I be deprived also of you both in one day? You see, sometimes when we talk, we talk as if we are the owner of time. We talk as if, ah, don't worry. You know, there are cases, I mean, thank God for cases. Husband will pregnate their wife in our African countries and they will now send them to Obodo Yibo. Go and give birth. I will come and join you. That's the end of the marriage. Visa, not possible. At least, I mean, I'm giving us a real, real story and I'm in the pulpit. I've had a few cases in France where those things happen. I, I can remember at least two. They just came with, uh, you know, pregnant, and I felt first, half, first Sunday you welcome them. I will notice. Then the second Sunday you know, ah, then the next thing is, Madam, where is the, where is the husband? Ah, pastor, a long story. Ah, I, within me I felt I'm, I'm a father <laughs> because I'm going to be the father of the child. You know, and that was exactly what happened. And funny enough, there were some one two few names that were abusing the lady sexually out of care. The other, I mean, there are, there are funny things going on out there. People are in the wilderness, honestly. And the child comes and uh, the pastor, yeah, come and pray. I will, I will pray, me children, I will pray. Then the next thing is uh, <laughs> food. Ah. Well, those children survive. Now they are all big boys, and but at least at that time, we were we all did a lot of unitary charity works for them. But why should those kind of things repeat themselves when you and I have access to information? So for Rebecca, she thought she was uh, it, that she knows. The wilderness blueprint. No one, write it down. No one knows the wilderness blueprint except the Almighty God. No one. Each and every one of us are, we, you know, we all have our various wilderness blueprints in relationship, even in our career, even staying abroad. If we are to all write our story now. All our case studies, they're going to be different. Those in Ukraine, it's different from those here in Hungary. Some of you, you walked in here because you have fulfilled your wilderness where you were coming from, in Europe. I mean, the individual that told me the other day when I was, uh, I said, uh, and I told you before, I said, how oh, did you fly? Did you fly? I said, no, pass of me, I, wa I walk out from Nigeria to France. I said, what? <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm being honest. I said, Emeka, I said, what you see? He said, I don't know, I walk out. So I told him, have you flown before? So he has not, he has not flown. 
So I now said, how did you get to France? I said, ah, what's the waiting now? You don't know, say we did. So that, then I now got to know that there are those who come from Nigeria to Libya, Libya to border of Spain, and ah, to be there it was even easier. And this guy could speak Arabic very well because he must have stayed in Libya. <laughs> oh dear Lord. And some of us, we just bam, we are here in Okodo Ribo. It's not as easy as you think. Let's get the best of all this. So for Rebecca, to, please don't be like Rebecca. Don't think you know this thing. When you see people going through some situation, don't water them down. Don't, don't think you are better. Please. Although that has cost us a lot in this church, and cost me as well, because then I'll be forced to help. We'll be forced to help, but don't let us now remain in the wilderness for long. Don't, don't let us be behaving as if we just came. No. Let's learn and let's be, don't let us repeat things that will keep us in the wilderness. And those who have issues, genuine issues, let's pray for them. Number four, the case study of Joseph. By the way, for, for Jacob, his own wilderness <laughs> was a very serious one. Few days turned to how many years? Eh? And thank God for him, he even had reasons to labor very well. Love, they cheated him. He said, I know Korea, I will go another seven. Ooh, for a thousand years, anybody can do anything for love. Even though if he's taught to do it the third time, so long that's a uh, ritual. Love is very powerful, though. Find the right person. Anyway, he had his own portion. A few days turned to many years. Rebecca did not see him again. Rebecca that thought that uh, he could just press button. I will call somebody. Call who? Who do you think you are? Let's behave ourse ourselves with the issues of life, brethren. Let's, let's hide ourselves under the shadow of the Almighty. Case study of Joseph. Number four. We are going to seven. We are number four. Then we are going to be praying shortly. You see, if you look at Genesis chapter 45, verse 5. Genesis 45, verse 5. Now, now, this is now Joseph trying to summarize all his wilderness experience. Now, therefore, be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me thither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. So all the wilderness experience that Joseph had, ah, he had a dream. Is it a crime for you to tell your brothers your dream? Be careful who you tell your dreams. He told his brother the dream. That was where the whole thing started. One, they did not like. They knew that he was the favorite of their father, and he now innocently, I think 16, 17, said, "Ah, I had a dream." And the next thing is, what dream? You, we bow down for you. You understand? He told his father the same thing. The father said, uh, are you saying that even me, I will bow down and say, but Papa, I don't know. He now told him to be careful. But he already told some bad bellies, his own brother. That was the reason why they put him in the pits. And they wanted him to die there. And you know, because of divine blueprints, slave traders came, they saw him, they took him in chain from his father's country into the wilderness of Egypt. I mean, you know the rest of the story. It that's so painful. Your own blood brother. So here in verse 5, so when they now eventually got to see that, ah, ah, we thought you were dead. And when they now bowed down to him, he now noticed, he now made them to understand, I told you guys. Now, maybe you are new or you are still recent in, in Europe or in Hungary. Be very careful what you put on your social media. Don't deceive yourself. The car will not be still your own. Don't go and take picture with it. Don't go and be careful. You should blank yourself. Honestly, blank yourself. If anything at all, I would recommend LinkedIn. I think it's a nice call. So that employers can see you, not uh, is it Instagram or Instagram. Please be careful. Joseph posted his dream. 
Not even on the social media, on the family media. <laughs> family WhatsApp group. And, and they go, ah, you. You will be surprised that there are bad bellies in your family. Talk less of, I mean, stepbrother. Ah, no, please be very careful. Please be very careful. So, for Joseph, he did not plan to find himself in the wilderness, but Bad Bele put him in the wilderness. Esau put himself in the wilderness. Agai put herself in the wilderness. All right? Jacob, with conspiracy with his mom, put himself in the wilderness. You know, remember I said this teaching would indicate or reveal who and who is behind the wilderness of our lives. And when we are there, how do we know that this wilderness is uh, as a result of bad belay or because of your own mistake? And when you are there, what are the tips? You know, for a guy, God told her to what? Humble. All right? And uh, the, I mean, we'll get to know more. Now, so for Joseph, for him, he understood his own, uh, he maintained his integrity. He did not jump around, even when he had access for sexual pleasure with his boss's wife, he said, ah, okay, madam, I'm sorry. How many of us can do that? All right? So these are the tips in the wilderness of life. Maintain your integrity. Focus on where you are going. As far as Joseph was concerned, he knew his dream. All right? I mean, for, for Jacob, his own is, the Lord used love to, uh, you know, cover his attention. But it was a punishment from God. But at the same time, it was God's blueprint that he's going to have 12 children. And I'm sure only one person cannot have 12 children. Maybe Richard, uh, maybe Richard, the love of his life. I mean, you, you know the story. 12, where God was going with Jacob's mistake is to get 12 children out of him that will become the 12 children of Israel. Are you following me? You are not here by accident. The Lord, even though if you are here because of your flaws, the Lord will, will use your mistake to bless you. Yeah. Say it better, amen. Yeah. Because God, as, as I said, the Almighty God is greater than your mistake. So, so, so long you sleep and He wakes you up, He wants you to know that He has an agenda for your life. It doesn't matter how long you have stayed here. In this season of divine shifts, there will, you will be remembered in Jesus' name. Yeah. You know, a guy had the voice of the angel. You will hear the voice of the angel in Jesus' name. Yeah. And if you can believe this, you will be shifted. Number five. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, for Joseph, little wonder when he was in prison, he was favored. Anything he was favored, he found favor before God, before men. You will find favor before immigration. Yeah. It is not it is not impossible. You will be favored in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Case study of the children of Israel, according to the book of Numbers. On Wednesday, I think the Bible study that one of our archive teaching was on Numbers. If you study the book of Numbers, it shows Leviticus and Numbers are books that can help us in the wilderness. Leviticus, that is where the sacrament is given, the, uh, the um, peace offering, whole offering, that is, if you can get understanding of all those whole offering. Remember, this was given to them in the wilderness. If you can get that, because all those offering, Leviticus is all about the codes that you need to have to be able to get the best from God. Honestly, that's all it's all about. The Numbers was or is a book that tells us the mistakes of the people in the wilderness. That is, when you are in the wilderness of life and you are repeating the mistakes of the people in the wilderness, the journey that, takes th that, is, that is expected to take three days can take 40 years. Look at what Joshua said. In Joshua chapter 5 verse 6, Joshua chapter 5 verse 6. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed. Why? Because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. 
unto whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord swore unto their fathers that he would give us a land fruit with milk and honey. So if you are in the wilderness of your life and you are disobeying God, you, you will remain, God forbid, somebody can die in the wilderness. At least I know a few people that have died here and in Europe that have been coming from. I mean, I buried them. And these are people with not too good lifestyle. Not too good lifestyle. So please, let's be very careful. Now, what, what is the summary of these people's problem? If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 5. 1 Corinthians 10. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown where? In the wilderness. Now let's be fast. Now. Everybody say now. Now. I'm not hearing you. Say now. Now. These things were our examples. To the intent that we should not what? Lost after evil things as they also lost them. Verse 7. Neither be ye idolaters as some of them as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. That was their lifestyle in the wilderness. That was why we always tell you, please don't let us waste our energy, nightclub, party. Some people in this country, they are here. Their own is party, party, form, 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 nothing to show forth. Neither let us commit fornication. Now, this fornication is not just having sex with somebody, you know, jumping from one people to, you know, what kind of, you date this person, you messed up, you messed up. There's nothing wrong with you having a partner. You agree, you are planning together. You understand? But when it is like, I think you not think it's a play. You see this one today, you date, you date. You know, it, it's not right. As some of them committed and fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. What they do then is that, what we call temple prostitute. You know, then they will drink wine, intoxicate themselves, and all they will all be nude and be having sexual relationship together under the uh, spell of idol and wine. Is that not what happened every Friday night or night club? This is the same thing. And some of us who say we have left Egypt, we join them. No, no, guys, no. All right. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpent. Verse 10. Neither murmur. Uh -huh. Don't murmur. As some of them also murmur. And were destroyed of the destroyer. Verse 11. Now, for the murmuring, they murmured against God. Say, God, why did you bring God out of Egypt? They murmured against God. God, why did you allow my visa to go through in the first place? Since I've been here, nothing to show for. Will you want to blame God for that? You search yourself. Now, they also murmur against Moses. Say, what kind of leader do you think you are? You think you are the only one that God speaks to? All right. If you want to understand the context, go and read the whole of, of, of number. And they also murmur against what God has given them. Say, oh, we only eat manna, 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 manna. We want to go back to Egypt. May you not say that. Amen. Now, all these things happen unto them for example. And they are written for our admonition. Upon whom the end of the words are come. Verse 12. Wherefore, let him, me, Tyre, all our pastors, our ministers, our workers, our members, wherefore, let him, that thing is stand, take he lest he fall. Let all of us, we are all together. You watch me, I watch you. You pray for me, I pray for you. When anybody is down, we we'll talk to you. I mean, we encourage one another not to throw stone, but now not, but we will not, uh, will not encourage habitual, open disobedience. Then, then that means you have not yet left Egypt. All right. May the Lord help us as we obey in the name of Jesus. Amen. Then number six, the case study of Job. Ah, you see. 
Job's own was God's setting. You know, Job chapter 1 verse 8, be careful when God is bragging about you. It's a good thing. And the Lord said unto Satan, As thou consider my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feared God and what escaped. That's a testimony of Job, and that landed him in a terrible wilderness. And the beautiful thing is that the Lord helped him. The Lord will help you. Amen. The Lord will sustain you. Amen. Lastly, what is your own case study? Number seven, your own, write it down. Your own case study. We've heard of others. How, where, where are you? What kind of wilderness are you going through? Is it the one that you put yourself into? Is it the one that is as a result of your ungodly union? Is it, is it the one that, that uh, or is it the one that bad belly people put you into because of your integrity? It, it doesn't matter the kind of wilderness you are going through. The Lord will shift you to a better place in the name of Jesus. Amen. On that note, let's just close our eyes. Let's close our eyes. Divine shifts. Whisper to the Lord. Say, Father, I thank you. I thank you because you know my story. I may hide it from people. I may even hide it from those close to me, but you know my story. If the wilderness you are going through right now, relationship-wise, you are the one that kicked your husband out, or you are the one that kicked your wife out, or you are the one that kicked your children out, or you are the one that kicked your destiny out, maybe because like Esau, you went and ate stupid kebab, and now you are in this situation, you can't blame anybody, or you, 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 you messed up, you, 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 you I, I don't know, I don't know, or, or you were set up by Joseph, Say, Lord, have mercy on me and not look at my case. Whether you are like the case of a guy that despises a, 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 a mistress, the Lord will remember you. All your own is, you know, like, like Ishmael, the innocent one, and you are groaning. The Lord will hear your groaning. Just say, just tell the Lord, say, Lord, I'm so sorry for, for, for where I am, Lord. I, I'm sorry, Father, if, I'm, if what I'm going through right now is because of my mistakes. I please help me come to my help come to my help i hear that you hear the groanings of people in bandage i'm in bandage i'm going through a tough time i'm going through i'm like I'm, I'm on a crossroad i don't even know what to do where to go when i sleep i look at the time i look at the day nothing seems to be working but we hear that there is a divine shift lord please Remember me, hear my groaning. You know, I did not ask you to shout. When you are groaning, you don't talk. Your soul is groaning. I mean, that's why you have to connect with what you have heard. If you are going through pain, whisper to the Lord. Say, Lord, hear me, hear me. Deliver me, please, please deliver me. Please shift me from this negative place to a place of comfort. Please send angel. You sent angel to Agar twice. Please send angel to me. I need your comfort. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need. Favor, please take the mic. Every day I need. No, there is a song. Amen. Amen. No. Lord, I need you. Yes, I Every hour I need my rock, my cheer, my calling all, oh Lord, I need. I want you to sing, um, yeah, do you, do you know that song? Some people need that song. They are emotional. They are depressed. They are lost. They are weary. Everybody is smiling. They too, they are smiling, but within them, they are weeping. Oh, Father, thank you. How can you beg for somebody to come and help you? Close your eyes. Beg for heaven.
to come and help you. Beg for heaven. Give heaven a WhatsApp call. Say, ah, Jehovah, you are holy, I am not, I admit. But please, can you come? Come, come, come. Help me today, this week. We, I want to wake up tomorrow and see the effects of this prayer. I need you, Lord. I need you for my situation. Please, I need you, Lord Jesus. Sometimes when my heart is yearning towards somebody I want, I want to call the person. As you have prayed, the Lord will hear your groaning. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for what you have told us today. We know that, yes, our character is more important to you than our comfort. Please, in this wilderness stage of our lives, may you help us. Help us to detach ourselves completely from Egypt and the Egyptian lifestyle. Help us to know that we are bound for Canaan lands. And please, help us not to murmur. Help us not to complain. Help us not to compromise. And those who are falling because of the pressure of the wilderness, as they cry for mercy, hear them. And that promised land that you have for us, shift us there in the name of Jesus. This week, the Lord will hear you. This week, helpers of destiny will locate you. This week, there will be a divine shift from negative to positive in your case in the name of Jesus. You will testify. Receive grace to be of godly character Amen. and lay out to wait on the promise of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father, because you know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's appreciate the Almighty God.